Hey everybody, this is Coach Matt over at Elite Throws Coaching. If you guys go to EliteThrowsCoaching.com, you can see we do a video analysis that you can uh, sign up for and purchase. Um, this one here is of a girl named Anna. She is from one of my favorite universities, uh, Slippery Rock University. A lot of friends who have graduated from there who are now coaching at the collegiate level. Uh, my overnight camp that I do every year is at Allegheny College and a lot of the coaches who have worked with that in the past actually graduated from Slippery Rock. So a lot of connection to Slippery Rock, which is why I'm doing this video analysis today for Anna. Uh, Anna is a uh, senior, I believe. Um, she's a glider. Um, goal this year is she's a good thrower. So goal this year is to be throwing like, you know, in the high 40s this year. Her PR is 44 feet even. Um, has goals to go to nationals, beat her school record, and she's just having a hard time with the glide. Um, and basically, she emailed looking for some tips and some drills, but I want to go over first kind of some things that are going on in this throw. So we're going to see, she sent me about 10 throws, but this one I think is probably um, the best one that, that she sent. It's a side view. It looks like it's her best throw by her reaction at the end. But we're going to see a few things. The first thing that she mentioned in her email to me is that she pushes off the toe in the back and she needs to start pushing off the heel in the back. So we're going to see that. We're going to frame by frame, you'll see there's a spot where the, the heel lifts off the ground. So right there, you can see if we go back one frame, the heel is on the ground. If we go forward, the heel is off the ground, off the ground, off the ground, off the ground off the ground. Now she does a good job of unseating. You can see how her hips drop and she starts to move backwards a little bit. Um, that's awesome. But at this point, I want you to rock on the heel a little bit too. If you're going to do this where you bring and you unseat, you drop your hips, don't go up on the toe like that. I want to see you stay flat footed or at this point start to rock back on the heel. Start to think about lifting the toe off the ground just like a squat, you push through your heel. So lift the toe off the ground, push through the heel. What that's going to do is that's going to help you get a little bit further into the circle. Because the second thing we're going to see here, I'm not sure this Y, like where the school, what school you're at. Red Y, I think Yale, but that's blue. So red Y, not sure. But you can see here, you've got these pieces, these red lines. I don't know if it's tape or what it is. But these red lines right here signify the middle of the circle. And we're going to start to see, I'll leave the cursor right there, that your foot is landing sort of in the back half. We want to be, I think, another maybe six to eight inches closer to the toe board. So you're just on the back half of the circle. I want you just inside the front half of the circle. Easiest way to do this is at practice. If you have a wooden circle, I've actually one of your uh, videos that you sent along here, you were indoors on a wooden circle. Take something like a, um, you know, like a band that you might have, like a rubber, one of those large ru rubber bands, super bands that you might have. Put it in the middle of the circle and try to hurdle over it. We do this outside a lot of times with jump ropes. We'll put a jump rope or even a toe strap from my Jeep. We'll take one of the toe straps. It's a flat piece of nylon and we'll lie it right in the middle of the circle. And it gives a target to kind of hurdle over, a target to kind of jump over. And you're going to see kind of why this is. So in order to show you why this is, I want to go back and play this kind of in full. And what I want you to watch is the delay between when the right foot lands in the middle and when the left foot touches down near the toe board. Check this out. See how it's the right foot lands and then like a half second later, the left foot lands? Let's watch that again. So we're going to go back. Right, left. See that, how it was right, left, right, left. So we really want to see almost a right, left, like super quick, almost like a one, two. Hopefully you can hear that on the mic. Right, left, right, left. You're going right, left, right, left. And because it's taking a long time uh, for that left foot to get down, you're shifting a lot of weight and you're opening up quite a bit. So. Let's see how this all kind of blends together. Keep this kind of a, a short video. We'll see how this all blends together. So you're not pushing off the heel. 
which means we're not getting full extension, we're not getting the maximum amount of force that we can get out of the back. You're landing in the front, and now watch what happens. Now, when this right foot plants down, you can see your left arm is closed. I'd like it maybe a little bit more closed, like reaching a little bit farther out the back. So your left arm is closed, but look at your center of mass right here. So your chest, your head, your center of mass right here is behind that right knee. So you've got your hip, your knee, and your ankle perfectly lined up, and you've got the center of mass behind your right knee. That is a perfect power position if this left foot was on the ground. But watch how long it takes for the left foot to get on the ground. So now the left foot's on the ground, and now check out your position. So left foot's on the ground. Now we have officially started, or we can officially start to go through the power position. But now your center of mass is inside of the foot instead of behind it. And now you no longer have your hip, your knee, and your ankle on top of each other. You've already started to shift inward and start to shift weight onto your left and open up. So this is really where the problem lies. We've got to get that left foot down quicker so that you don't open up and shift weight too early. But at the same time, we've got to get this right foot underneath you. Get this right foot in the front half of the circle. Because check it out. Look at where the hip is. If I draw a line as straight as I can. I had too much coffee today. Draw as straight of a line as possible down. There's where your knee is going to be right under the hip, and there's where the foot is going to be, right under the knee. So we want the hip, the knee, and the toe. And look where it's going to be. Instead of being in the back half of the circle, it's going to be about another eight inches or so in the front half of the circle. So that kind of shows everything that's going on with you, Anna, is all kind of related. So we've got pushing off the heel in the back is going to help you get farther into the front. Getting farther in the front means that in the power position, your hip, your knee, and your ankle are going to be stacked on top of each other. It's also going to mean that you're probably going to get this left foot down quicker because it's a shorter distance, right, left. You're going to stay back longer. Your left arm is going to be closed longer. Your weight is going to be back behind the right knee, and you're going to have more weight, and you're going to have uh, more force that you're able to push into that ball because remember it's all about velocity it's the speed plus the direction you've got the direction as you can see beautiful push i mean holy schmaloli beautiful push but check out the right foot because we're shifting because your feet are wide watch how long you push with the right foot you're pushing 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 at this point, you can't push anymore. That foot's coming off the ground. You still haven't released the ball. Still haven't released the ball, and the foot's off the ground. Still haven't released the ball. The foot's off the ground. Still haven't released the ball. Foot's off the ground. Still haven't released the ball. Now your foot's way off the ground. Boom. Now the ball is out of your hand. You can see it right there. But look how long your right foot was off the ground. So a term that we use a lot is called working the circle, meaning keep your feet on the ground. Stay in double support for as long as possible. Because you are landing in the back half of the circle, because the left foot is coming down late, and because you're shifting weight, you don't have the ability to keep this right foot on the circle. You don't have the ability to push and get full extension out of this right leg. So really, you're just shifting and throwing, we want to see you pushing through the ground and throwing. Push through the ground as long as possible. You literally want to try to take this wooden circle and push it down so hard that it gets buried in the turf. That's how long. That's, that's how much force you want to push down with. And you can't push down if the foot's off the ground. The foot's off the ground because you're shifting weight. You're shifting weight because you're not landing in the front half of the circle. And you're not landing in the front half of the circle because you're not getting a good drive off the heel in the back. So work backwards. I know we went through a lot of stuff in this short video, but work backwards. 
and try to see the, the effect and the root cause. So push off the heel in the back, land in the front half of that circle. That way, remember, put something down to signify front half, back half, and then you know where it is. In fact, let's go back to the first video, one of the first videos that you sent me. Let's see here, where is it? Yeah, perfect. So your circle has it too. You've got the, the uh, kind of that 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock line. Doesn't look like there's a separation or any type of uh, line that goes across. But I mean, take something. Take a jump rope. Take a strap. Like whatever it is, go, go in the closet where you keep all your stuff. And you're probably going to have a broken piece of equipment that a sprinter would have used or some type of rope. Put it right across the middle and try to get over it. Try to push off the heel and get over it. And that way when you push off the heel, see how you're starting up on the toe? pushing off the toe. We want you to rock back, push off the heel, and then you're going to land in the front half of the circle without that big reach and shift into your throw. Okay, So it's all related. All these things connect together. Uh, first step is to fix the back. Once you fix the back, that should help you fix the middle. Once you fix the middle, that should help you keep your foot on the ground so that you can push and stay closed, so that you can push all the way into that throw. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Anna, again, thank you so much for sending in the video and letting me post it here to Facebook. Um, if you guys had any questions, go to EliteThrowsCoaching.com, click on the video analysis link, purchase a video analysis. It comes with more than just this video. It comes with a, a long, explained, usually they're about 20 minute long video analysis. It comes with an email explaining everything as well as uh, links to um, YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, and YouTube channels of other coaches with drills and techniques and stuff to help you explain it even further. So go to EliteThrowsCoaching.com um, and check out the video analysis, and I will talk to you guys real soon.